Well, welcome to class, everybody. Today, we are going to do stoichiometry. We are going to do stoichiometry virtually. So what is stoichiometry? Let's get started right away. We're going to first define what stoichiometry is. Let me get my pen. Stoichiometry is defined as, well, basically, it's um, taking all of the um, stuff we've learned about balancing equation and, and applying it to moles. It's a bunch of how many or how much questions is what stoichiometry is, okay? So we are gonna basically answer a bunch of times, how many, how much, using a balanced chemical equation and moles. So it brings back all our favorite things. It brings back molar masses, it brings back balancing equations, all those kind of stuff. And with stoichiometry, we're gonna be, answer, be able to answer the question, how many or how much? Let's go, people, let's do this. Let me get a change of color. Okay, so much better. Okay, now, um, let me go back here, shoot. Okay, all right, let's go here. We'll go on to the next one. And go from here. Okay, now, first off, um, this is like introductory stoichiometry and stoichiometry is based on not breaking the law. So I put this on, oh my gosh. So I put this in, in the background at least it's playing in my ears. You can't hear it right now, but we have to make sure that it's a balanced chemical equation. Otherwise, stoichiometry falls apart. So before you start, we have to make sure that we are not breaking the law. So you can see that this is clearly breaking the law with the three. So I think I'm gonna balance it by putting a three right here. Now we have these balanced. And then I think I need a three right here. And now I think it is balanced. So the ratio is three to one to one to three. So we could, this can actually be read as three moles of NaOH reacts with one mole. You, people don't usually write it, but you can, of phosphoric acid to produce one mole of sodium of phosphate and three moles of water. So the question is, is how many moles of sodium hydroxide, that's that right there, are needed to produce 21 moles of sodium phosphate. That's this right here. Okay, so, and they're assuming you have excess. So you're gonna see this all the time when they say we have excess, it just means you have enough. So what I like to do, just so we keep it straight, is I always draw an arrow from the one we know to the one I'm looking for. And now what we're gonna do, this is called a mole-mole problem. And mole-mole problems just go right to the ratio. So uh, if I have 21 moles of Na3PO4, and I know in the balance equation, this is the ratio, one mole of Na3PO4 is equal to three moles of NaOH. And, and look, if you take 21 times three, which I, I know what it is, it's it's gonna be 63, right? I can do that in my head. Um, basically, that will give you how many moles of NaOH is made. So 63 moles is made when, three, um, when 21 moles of, uh, sodium phosphate is produced. So you need 63 moles. So you can go forwards, you come back, and you know what? You would also make, uh, you know, since it's the same ratio, you would make 63 moles of water as well. And you would need 21 moles of this to react because all the ratios stay consistent. So when we're doing mole-mole problems, if everything occurs in the balanced chemical equation via moles. Okay, so fill these out as you go. Uh, that's part of the lesson. Let's keep going. Now, the general format is instead of it being um, moles, they're going to give it to you in grams. And so you just basically have to get it into um, moles before you start. So like it's going to look like this. You're going to have some given mass, some molar mass to get into moles. The ratio, this comes from the balanced chemical equation and the new molar mass. And they all kind of look like some variety of this. OK, so molar mass, this is found on the periodic table. So when you look at your periodic table, which mine's just right over my shoulder, I'm underneath the zebra right now, uh, 18 grams is one mole. That's the mass of this thing added up. And then, you know, 180 for C6, H12, O6. Uh, so the, you add up all the formulas for the molar mass. So let's, let's take a look at the first problem. So for this first problem, we are going to go from, okay, so first off, we make sure our equations balance. You know, sometimes I try to trick you by not balancing it. It looks like the equation's balanced. And then we are going to go from 40 grams of hydrogen. That's this right here. And we are going to react with excess nitrogen. That just means you have extra. And we're going to figure out how many grams of ammonia is present. 
So look, we're going to start with 40 grams of H2. And then we're going to set up our, our dimensional analysis thing here. And we know that, that the molar mass of N is 14, H is 3 total. So it's 17 grams of NH3. Or, whoa, we're doing H2. Mistake. Let's start over. So I'm going from 40 grams of hydrogen to ammonia. So don't, don't, you want to start with the H2. Wow. Okay, so 40 grams of H2. And there's two grams of H2 for every one mole of H2. So that's this is the molar mass part right here. That's the molar mass of these guys. These should match up. See my formulas match up. And then my ratio is three moles of H for every two moles. This always comes from the balance equation. So I'm going to put three moles down here of H2 and then two moles of NH3 up here. Now, if I was going to N2, it'd be a different ratio, but the, the question is always going to give you one and you're going to ask for another. And so one mole of NH3 and then whatever the mass of this is, which this is 17 grams. Okay, so now I'm going to take my calculator out. Okay, so I'm going to move this over here. I should be able to do it over here. So 40 times 2 times 17 equals... And then I'm going to divide that by the product of the bottom. So this is just 6 on the bottom. So 2 times 3 is 6. So divided by 6. And I get 1,000. Let me come back to it. We'll do sig figs even too. 1, 4, 5, 0 grams. Or 1.45 times 10 to the third grams of ammonia is produced. So that's a mass mass problem. Remember, we're trying to figure out how much stuff occurs, like how much product, how much reactant. That's all it is over and over again, but it's really a big part. Okay, so now uh, remember the stoic train. Choo choo. So you're going to always start with grams of something, usually, because grams are something that is easy to handle. And so you're going to start with grams. You're going to get it to moles by dividing by molar mass. You're going to use the ratio here. And then you're going to go back to mass at the time. Now, sometimes you're only going to use part of this uh, stoic train, but but they, again, these come with practice. We'll do one here. Okay, so let's take a look at this one. This one is breaking the law, breaking the law. Okay, and you can tell because you can see that there's two O's and, and only one over there. So we're going to fix it here. Whoops, wrong thing. So we're going to put a two here and a two here. Now it's it's not messing with the law. And what I like to do is, again, I like to circle the one I, I start with. So I have 100 moles of mercury. So they tell you that right here. And they always ask a question, how many, how much? How many grams of, of mercury to oxide? That's this stuff right here. Well, right here. Draw my arrow better. So now I'm going to start with 100 moles of Hg. And I'm going to get it into grams of mercury. When you do this problem, just a quick note. Uh, sometimes the stoic train, you don't always get it directly into, like you don't have to start with grams. Sometimes it's given to you in moles. So like I can actually, let me show you this. I'm going to jump ahead or back. Maybe if I can go back. Oh, I went the wrong way. Okay, so in this problem, what I'm actually doing is I'm jumping directly away from this first step of of going to grams. Like I don't have to do that. I can go straight into moles and mole, right in the mole ratio. So this is actually called a mass mole problem because I start with, or mole mass, I start with moles and I end with mass. Okay. So let's see if this makes sense. So we're going to start with the 100 moles of HG and we're going to go straight to moles. Okay. So there's two moles of HG for every two moles of mercury oxide, mercury to oxide. And then since they ask for grams, right, you have to do one mole. And I love it when they give it to you, the grams right here. So it's 233 grams of HGO. Okay. So when I plug this in, I don't know, I have a virtual calculator. What am I doing? I'm, I grab my actual calculator out. Okay. So we're going to take, okay, let me clear this out. We're going to take 100 100 times 2 
times 233 equals divided by 2 equals, again, it's all the top divided by the bottom, you would get 23300 grams of HGO. That's a lot. That's a lot. Okay. So that is called a, this is actually not a mass mole. That's a mole mass problem, but they're all some variety of the stoic train, right? Choo choo the stoic train. Okay. Now this is the last one we're going to do, and I'm going to let you guys do some of these um, in class today and we'll practice these and make sure you're good. So first step, make sure you have a balanced equation. So we check, is it balanced? We're like, oh yeah, it looks balanced. Oftentimes if you see a bunch of coefficients just, just assume it's balanced they usually don't try to trick you with the wrong ones okay so we know that we have 48 grams of this and that we are looking for how many grams of hbf we have so we're going from here to here and we're going to start with the mass 48.0 grams of bf3 and what we're going to do first off is we have to find uh, the molar mass of bf3 all right, so this time I didn't give it to you. See, I have to use a periodic table. Thankfully, I have a giant one. Wait, right there. So if I look up, B is, I'm going to call it 11, and F is 19. So we have 11 plus 3 times 19. Okay, now we're estimating, you know, if you're on an AP test, you would want to do the exact numbers, but it works out well uh, just for speed to say, Ain't nobody got time for this, right? So 3 times 19 plus 11. That's really hard. I have to add that to my calculator. So I have 68 grams and one mole of BF3. Okay, so I just got it from grams to moles. You can see I have a little bit less than one mole, right? 68 would be one mole. So the next step is my mole ratio, which is 4 moles of BF4 or three, that's right here. This always this middle step always comes up from the balanced chemical equation. And then three moles of HBF4, okay? And that comes from right here, see the four and the three. And then we're gonna stop with one mole of HBF4, and then whatever this mass is. So we know that H is one plus 11 plus four times 19. Okay, so I'm again get my calculator out wise and well, right? So let's get rid of that. All right, so we have one plus 11 plus four times, wait, I did it the wrong order. I'm being dumb right now. Four times 19 plus 11 plus one. 88 grams, 88 grams in one mole. Okay, so this is the mass mass. Notice how we start with mass and end with mass. Notice how this middle thing is always there, that mole ratio. So let's do the math one more time. So we're gonna do 48, that's right here, times three, times 88. And you get 12, what was it? 672. And you're gonna divide that by divided by 68, divided by four. Four equals, and you get 46.6 grams is my answer. Notice how everything's pretty much in like four significant figures. There are three significant. Okay, so we're gonna try a couple of these. Make sure you guys can do this. Again, biggest tip is follow the stoic train, right? Follow the stoic train. And you should be totally cool. Um, always kind of, they always have a, a variation of this as well. So you're always given some mass, some molar mass, some mole ratio, some new molar mass. It's just a bunch of math, just like most of chem. But I, th I think you guys can do this. I think you can do it without me today with my virtual self. And I think you'll be totally fine. Okay, take care. Good luck. You guys should be working on the worksheet now that um, the sub will be passing out. Thank you. Bye.